The history of the Earth and its creation has always been surrounded by mysteries and fascination. Since ancient times, different cultures have attempted to understand how our planet came to be, creating narratives and myths that reflect their beliefs and values. With the advancement of science, many of these stories have been reinterpreted through theories that seek to explain not only the formation of the Earth, but also its evolution over billions of years. In this context, we will explore the intriguing theories that attempt to unravel the truth behind the creation of the Earth. From the scientific perspective of the Big Bang and the Solar Nebula, to the mythological explanations that permeate our traditions, each theory offers a unique window into understanding the complexity of our origin and the nature of the universe we inhabit. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell to receive new episodes. In Hindu mythology, one of the most fascinating stories about the creation of the world is the myth of Purusha Sukta, which speaks of a primordial being called Purusha. Imagine Purusha as a cosmic giant, a grand figure representing the essence of the entire universe. According to this narrative, before creation, there was only chaos and darkness. Purusha was the only being that existed, a divine consciousness encompassing everything, but without a defined form. Then, in an act of self-sacrifice, he decided to create the world and everything that inhabits it. The gods, realizing it was necessary to create something from Purusha, performed a sacred ritual and Purusha was sacrificed. His body was divided into different parts, each transforming into something essential for creation. For example, from his head emerged the gods and sages representing knowledge and wisdom. His hands became the warriors who would bring protection to the world. From his legs arose the merchants and workers, fundamental to society. Thus, each part of Purusha's body gave rise to different aspects of life, including the castes, which are the social divisions in Hindu culture. The story also shows us how the universe was organized. The parts of Purusha's body not only formed human beings, but also everything around us. The sky, the mountains, the rivers, the forests, and the oceans all came from Purusha. This narrative not only explains the creation of the physical world, but also reflects a deep connection between human beings and nature. The idea is that we are all part of a greater whole, an extension of Purusha. Furthermore, the Purusha Sukta speaks of the interdependence among all beings. No one lives in isolation. All are connected by a cosmic web that refers back to the sacrifice of Purusha. The story teaches that for life and prosperity to exist, there must be collaboration and respect among all. This notion of unity and interconnectedness is a central principle in Hindu philosophy and resonates strongly in how Hindus view life and the universe. Through this myth, Hindus also understand the importance of ritual and devotion. The sacrifice of Purusha is a reminder that to create and maintain the world, we sometimes need to give up something, whether it be time, resources, or even personal interests. The sacred ritual performed by the gods is not just a story from the past, but an invitation to the ongoing practice of creating and maintaining harmony in the world. Thus, the Purusha Sukta is much more than a mere creation story. It is a rich tapestry that intertwines ideas of sacrifice, interconnectedness, and unity. It invites us to reflect on our place in the universe and how our actions, no matter how simple, can impact the whole. In this way, the creation of the earth and all its parts becomes a celebration of life where each human being, animal, and plant has a role to play in the great drama of existence. The myth of Purusha teaches us that we are all interconnected, descendants of that primordial being, and that the world we inhabit is a reflection of his sacrifice and greatness. The hollow earth theory is a fascinating idea that has captured the imagination of many throughout history. According to this theory, the earth is not solid as we know it, but is instead hollow inside. 
This conception proposes that within our planet lies a vast, empty space that could house advanced civilizations, unknown ecosystems, and even mythical creatures. Although this theory is considered pseudoscientific, its narrative provokes curiosity and inspires dreams. The idea that the Earth is hollow dates back to ancient myths and legends. Civilizations throughout history, including the Nordic peoples and the Maya, spoke of underground worlds. However, it was in the 17th century that the theory began to gain popularity with the work of scientists and writers who, in attempting to explain geological phenomena, began to speculate about the possibility of a hollow interior. They imagined that the Earth's crust was thin and that below it existed a large habitable space. This vision was appealing because it allowed for the imagination of an unknown world where civilizations could live, away from the eyes of the outside world. At that time, science was in its infancy, and many phenomena were not fully understood. Explanations involving the idea of a hollow interior were often more engaging than established geological theories. Advocates of the hollow earth, such as the famous traveler and writer John Cleve Sims Jr., even proposed expeditions to explore what might lie inside the Earth. Simmers believed there were polar openings that led to the hollow interior and that these openings could be accessible. His idea sparked the interest of many, and he even garnered support to explore these remote regions. But how can we understand the attraction of this theory? The idea that there could be secret civilizations beneath our feet is undoubtedly captivating. It sparks curiosity about what might be hidden in the depths of the Earth and offers a sense of adventure and discovery. Imagine finding an ancient city with advanced technology that has lived beyond the reach of our society for millennia. The Hollow Earth narrative also fuels stories of science fiction and fantasy, inspiring novels, movies and even games. However, modern science does not support this theory. Geological research, including seismic analysis and studies on gravity, shows that the Earth is made up of several layers, the crust, the mantle, and the core. The evidence is clear that the Earth is a solid planet and that its interior is very different from what the hollow Earth theory suggests. With advances in technology and knowledge, it becomes clear that there are no holes leading to vast habitable spaces, as proposed by the advocates of this idea. Despite its lack of scientific foundation, the hollow earth theory continues to capture the imagination of many. It serves as a reminder of how the human desire to explore the unknown and discover new worlds can lead to the creation of intriguing stories and theories. Even though science has demonstrated that the earth is solid, the idea of a hidden world beneath our feet remains a fascinating part of popular culture evoking images of adventures and mysteries waiting to be uncovered. The young Earth theory is a belief that asserts that our planet was created by God in a relatively short period, between 6,000 and 10,000 years ago. This idea contrasts with the widely accepted scientific view, which states that the Earth formed about 4.5 billion years ago through slow and gradual geological processes. To better understand the Young Earth theory, it is important to consider its roots in religious tradition and how it has developed over time. The origin of this theory can be found in literal interpretations of the Bible, especially in the book of Genesis, which describes the creation of the world in six days. Advocates of this view believe that by strictly following this narrative, it is possible to determine an approximate age for the Earth. For them, each day of creation corresponds to a 24-hour period, resulting in a timeline that places the creation of the planet just a few millennia ago. This is part of a broader perspective known as creationism, which opposes the theory of evolution and other scientific explanations for the origin of life and the universe. Supporters of the young Earth theory generally reject the geological timescales accepted by science, which are based on evidence such as radiometric dating, the study of rock layers and fossils, and the observation of geological processes in action. For them, the complexity and beauty of the world are seen as proof of the direct work of a creator. 
Many who believe in this theory maintain that evidence of God's creation is present in nature in extraordinary events and in the features of the earth. For example, they may point to the appearance of certain fossils or geological formations and argue that these elements can be explained more coherently with the idea of a creator than with established scientific explanations. However, the young earth theory faces significant criticism. Scientists and geologists often argue that the evidence accumulated over decades of research clearly demonstrates that the earth is much older than the timeline proposed by creationists. The geological record, for instance, shows layers of rock that formed over billions of years, and radiometric dating allows for precise determination of the age of rocks and fossils. Furthermore, many critics of the young earth theory view it as an approach that ignores the rich and complex history of the earth. The idea that the earth is young can overly simplify what we know about our planet, its transformations and the evolution of life. The scientific understanding of the earth helps us appreciate not only its antiquity, but also the processes that shaped its surface and the environments that sustain life. In summary, the Young Earth Theory is a belief that presents an alternative view on the origin and age of the Earth, grounded in literal interpretations of religious texts. While it has strong support among certain religious groups, it is widely contested by the scientific community. The discussion surrounding this theory reveals the tensions between faith and science, showing how different worldviews can coexist, but also come into conflict. This difference in perspective on the age of the Earth and its formation invites a deeper dialogue about our existence and the place we occupy in the universe. Imagine that life on Earth did not begin here, but rather in some distant part of the universe. This is the fascinating idea behind the panspermia theory. According to this theory, life, or at least the microorganisms that gave rise to it, may have arrived on our planet aboard comets, asteroids, or even particles of space dust. The notion is that before becoming a habitable planet, Earth could have been a receiving location for life forms that traveled through the cosmos. The theory of panspermia raises intriguing questions about how life could have spread among planets and even between stars. The idea is that during the early days of the solar system, billions of years ago, Earth was undergoing very different conditions from those we know today. It was a hostile environment with intense radiation, extreme temperatures and an unfavorable atmosphere. However, life in the form of microorganisms could have survived on small celestial bodies such as asteroids and comets. These bodies carrying the first signs of life could have been launched into space in catastrophic events such as explosions on neighboring planets. Once in space, these microorganisms would have the ability to withstand extreme conditions. Studies show that some bacteria and fungal spores can survive in hostile environments, such as the vacuum of space and intense radiation. If these tiny beings, almost invisible to the naked eye, had settled on a comet that passed near Earth, they could have fallen onto our planet during an impact event. Thus, Instead of life originating from a single point on Earth, panspermia suggests that it could be the result of a much larger and more complex cosmic process. This theory not only offers a new perspective on the origin of life, but also makes us reflect on what it means to be human. If life on Earth may have come from space, it connects us to a much broader universe. We might not just be inhabitants of an isolated planet, but part of a vast and intriguing cosmic ecosystem. Furthermore, panspermia raises the possibility that life exists on other planets or moons in the solar system, such as Mars or Jupiter's moons like Europa. These icy worlds, which may have liquid water beneath their surfaces, are considered places where life could potentially thrive. However, panspermia does not provide definitive answers about the origin of life. It merely suggests that life, or the elements that support it, may have a more complex origin than we thought. For many scientists, the idea is appealing as it opens new lines of inquiry. What could be discovered by exploring the far reaches of the solar system? 
What secrets does the universe hide in its vast depths? Panspermia, therefore, is more than just a theory. It is a window into new possibilities. It encourages us to look to the sky and ask whether we are not just the product of our planet, but also of a universe that, in some way, plays a role in the creation and continuity of life. Each bright star we see at night could very well be a beacon from a past that is still unfolding, leading us to a future full of discoveries and questions. Life, after all, may be a cosmic journey, and we are just the travelers who are still learning about our destination. In ancient Egyptian civilization, the creation myth revolves around Atum, a powerful god and creator. The story begins in a time very distant, before any form of life, when all that existed was a vast chaos, represented by the primordial waters called Nun. Imagine a dark and deep sea, where nothing could be seen, where life had not yet begun. In that emptiness, Atum emerged, rising from the waters like a bright light, a sign that something grand was about to happen. Atum was considered a solitary god, but he held great power within himself. He looked around and realized that loneliness was not his only option. With a surge of will and desire, he decided to create the world. To do this, he focused and began to form the universe. Using his words and thoughts, Atum transformed the darkness of Nun into solid ground. He raised the first hill, called Ben Ben, which would become the home of the gods and life. But creation did not stop there. Atom, feeling that he needed companions to populate the world he was forming, decided to create other gods. First, he created Shu, the god of air, and Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. Shu and Tefnut represented the light and space that would allow life to flourish. As soon as they were born, Atom was pleased, but soon missed them when they went to explore the world. With this, Atom, concerned, decided to send Shu and Tefnut on a mission to discover what lay beyond the waters. After their exploration, Shu and Tefnut returned, bringing new knowledge and experiences. They also brought back light and moisture, essential for the creation of life. With their presence, Atom's creation expanded even further. Together, they gave rise to a new generation of gods, including Geb, the god of the earth, and Nut, the goddess of the sky. Geb and Nut were in love, but their love was forbidden, and Atom separated them, making Nut stay above Geb, thus forming the great vault of the sky that covers the earth. With the sky and earth separated, life began to thrive. Atom watched the creation of humans, animals, and plants. He used the earth and the waters to shape the forms of life that would inhabit the world. The Egyptians believed that by creating life, Atom became a father to all. He not only gave rise to the gods, but also to all beings that inhabited Egypt, including the Egyptian people themselves. The Egyptians honored Atom as the great creator and considered his works sacred. For them, each element of nature had a special meaning and everything was interconnected through the will of this god. The pyramids and temples were built in his honor and rituals were performed to thank Atom for his creation and protection. This creation myth was not just an explanation of how the world began, but also a way to understand the role of the gods and the importance of order amidst chaos. Atom, emerging from Nun, symbolized the light and life that could arise from the deepest despair and disorder, demonstrating that even in the darkest of times, hope and creation can always be reborn. Throughout this section, we explored the various theories about the creation of Earth, from scientific explanations to mythological narratives that have shaped our understanding of the cosmos. Each theory brings with it a wealth of information and a new perspective on the origin of our planet, challenging us to think more deeply about our existence and the role we play in the universe. While some of these theories are more widely accepted than others, each holds unique value and contributes to our understanding of the history of Earth and the cosmos. Now that you've had the opportunity to learn about these intriguing ideas, don't miss the continuation of this journey. In part four, we will delve even deeper into the implications of these theories and how they influence our worldview.
Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any updates and stay tuned for content that will expand your horizons. Join us and discover more about the mysteries of the creation of Earth.